millions of years since the earth has formed, it has spewed hot water and steam. Where the earth's crust is weak, water heated from hot magma deep in the earth's bowels rises up creating natural wonders, geysers, hot springs and thermal pools. This heat from the earth is called geothermal energy. It is a clean and renewable source of energy. It is winters in Leh, a major tourist destination located in the high altitude cold desert of Ladakh in India. Temperatures are a freezing 15 degrees Celsius below zero. For the 100,000 odd residents of Ladakh, five months of winter is grueling. Leh gets electricity only for a few hours every day from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. For heat and comfort, they have few options. A family-run guest house uses an innovative heater running on LPG, the common cooking gas. यहाँ बिजली की काफी किल्लत है। बिजली सिर्फ शाम को ही आती है, पांच घंटे। तो हम LPG का ये हीटर यूज़ करते हैं। And in rural areas. Far from the city, families use wood and dung to keep the fires burning and heat their homes. ये चकता पे क्या है गोबर और लकड़ी यूज करते हैं जिससे खाना भी बनता है चाय भी बनता है और कमरा भी गर्म हो जाता है जी. As the sun disappears behind the mountains, a loud roar breaks the evening silence. Eight generators running on diesel and belching out huge plumes of smoke power the city. Besides polluting the pristine environment of the Himalayas, this contributes 1800 tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. For civilian population in District Leh, the diesel consumption for the last year, that is 6-7, it worked out to around 20 lakh litres. So that's an enormous amount. And at the same time, we have huge establishments of army, of paramilitary forces, of air force. So all they, they meet up the power from their own resources. But all that comes from the diesel generation only. A possible solution to Leh's power woes and smog-filled air lies in the bubbling waters of Jumatang. Here I'm sitting next to the Bank of Indus, boiling eggs in a thermal spring in the month of December. That's the beauty of geothermal energy. This is the Earth's heat trapped in Earth's balls. It comes to the surface in the form of thermal springs or geysers. It's one of the oldest forms of energy available to mankind. And this energy is being used by ancient civilization for heating homes, for therapeutic uses, and for boiling food. This energy can be put to greater use than just boiling eggs. A good example of greater use that India can emulate comes from the land of fire and ice. Iceland endures a long and harsh winter, but is blessed with vast geothermal resources. Situated on the mid-Atlantic ridge, Iceland is a region of high volcanic activity, steaming vents, geysers and hot springs. It uses this geothermal energy to generate about a quarter of its electricity. The geothermal water or the energy in Iceland is used in various ways. Heating homes, 
for swimming pools, outdoor swimming pools, for the industry like the greenhouse industry, fish drying facility, uh, lumber drying facilities. So geothermal steam is a reliable source of energy. India too has a few promising sites that can be tapped for geothermal energy. The Puga Valley, a few hours drive from Leh, is one such site. Puga lies in the Himalayan geothermal belt, a region of high tectonic activity where two continental plates collide. Most geothermal sites exist in such places. Along such areas and where porous rock exists beneath impermeable rock, over centuries water seeps in and heats up from the magma present further below, thus creating a geothermal reservoir. Professor Chandrasekharam, a geothermal energy expert, has been studying the hot springs here. The temperature of the rising waters is hot enough to scald a person. We are in Puga geothermal field. This field has several thermal springs like this, whose temperature is 87 degrees Celsius, is the boiling point of water at this elevation. This gives a good indication that we have a very good thermal reservoir here, which can be used for producing power, like what has been done in Tibet and uh, China. To estimate a geothermal reservoir's potential for power generation, it is vital to estimate the temperature of the hot waters deep in the reservoir. Various minerals and chemical elements dissolve in water at varying temperatures. By doing a geochemical analysis of the water sample from Puga hot spring in the lab, Professor Chandrasekharam can estimate the temperatures of the water deep in the earth. A geothermal power plant has a very low carbon footprint with negligible carbon dioxide emissions. Unlike a fossil fuel power plant, it mainly produces steam. This power plant in Iceland generates 80 megawatts of power. A network of pipes brings hot water and steam from production wells in the area to the plant. The Swat Sengi power plant was the first geothermal power plant in the world to use the resulting hot waters for district heating. Here we have a symbol of hot rock chamber. The temperature here is one kilometer down is about 242 degrees centigrade. The brine mixture of steam and seawater comes up here into a high pressure separatus where you separate the steam from the seawater and then the steam goes on here, goes through the turbine and forces it to make electricity about 30 megawatts. In addition to generating power and heating homes, the Swatsengi power plant releases the cooled down geothermal waters to a thermal spa. In Puga, a power plant similar to the one in Iceland is planned. The binary power plant will use geothermal hot waters extracted from two kilometers beneath the earth using a production well. This hot water will be transferred to a heat exchanger at the same time, a working fluid, an organic liquid with low boiling temperature, will be passed through the heat exchanger. The working fluid will turn into vapors and the force of expanding vapors will turn the turbines to power the generators and produce electricity. The vapors will then be condensed back to liquid to start the process again. The geothermal waters will be re-injected back into the reservoir. So the data we collected gives an indication that the thermal reservoir extends to about 3 square kilometers 
which is located in depth of about uh, 2 kilometers, and the temperature is more than 250 degrees Celsius. And with this database, we estimated that you could generate more than 250, uh, 250 megawatts of power in this area. Professor Chandrasekharam's research shows several places in India that are ideal for producing geothermal power. He estimates that these sites could provide 10,000 megawatts of clean, renewable energy. The technology for harnessing geothermal energy is now well established. There is a huge untapped uh, heat source uh, in, in the earth. And there is today a lot of knowledge around the earth about how to harness, how to access this heat source. Here in Iceland, in Italy, in the States, in many, many countries. So it is time for people to come together and go after the heat embedded in, this, in the earth. If Professor Chandrasekharam and his team can replicate the success of Iceland in Puga, the people of Leh and the entire state can hope to have a reliable and clean source of power. There is a form of geothermal energy that occurs worldwide, even where there are no hot springs or geysers. The earth absorbs and retains the sun's heat. As a result, temperatures just below the earth remain constant throughout the year at around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. This fact has an interesting application. It can be utilized for efficient air conditioning. Mr. Chandrasekhar from Vishakhapatnam is a pioneer in installing geothermal air conditioning systems. He did his first installation in the house of Mr. Zutshi. In a geothermal air conditioning system, like the one in Mr. Zutshi's house, the earth is used as a heat source or a heat sink. The system comprises of a geo-exchange heat pump, a ground loop, a hydronic pump to circulate water through the ground loop and ducts. Like a normal air conditioner, the geo-exchange heat pump installed in the house extracts heat from the house in the summers. But instead of expelling the heat to the air outside, it expels the heat into the earth through water circulating in a closed ground loop. A network of pipes buried a few feet under the ground. Temperatures being far lower under the ground than outside air in summers, it makes for efficient heat flow rates and hence lower power consumption. In the winters, the process is reversed to heat the home. I wish more people would put up geothermal installations, especially in hot and humid areas in India, and there is a lot of that in India, in banks, residential complexes, and all those places which have enough land to put the underground piping in. It really would make a lot of difference to India's energy bill, because geothermal air conditioning is 60% more efficient than the normal air conditioning. Recently, Mr. Chandrasekhar has installed such a system in a private college in Vishakhapatnam. We calculated we needed around 30 tons of uh, air conditioning for a conventional air conditioner. But here we've installed only two machines which are 7 tons and 8 tons. So we are actually running the whole uh, facility here with, with 15 tons. Mr. Chandrasekhar is passionate about his work. He has already done a few installations and many more are in the pipeline. Geothermal air conditioning systems can be done in any part of the world. I've done it successfully in India. I've done it in Hyderabad, I've done it in Bangalore, I've done it in Vishakhapatnam, and I've done it in Gurgaon. Three of them have been in, uh, residential installations and one a commercial one. To ensure climate security, 
we have to make renewable energy work for us at the same time reducing our energy consumption geothermal energy is one of the many options that we should look to exploit in the coming years the future lies beneath our feet